All right, so this is a little uh, mini, mini video to uh, do some um, lens correction stuff and a little bit of vignetting. So uh, go ahead and open up Auto Lens Profile Start, uh, or I'm going to open that one, and you'll see it here. So we're in Camera Raw, since that was a raw file, an NEF file, which is a, which is a um, Nikon Raw file that opens in Camera Raw here. So we're gonna do all this stuff in Camera Raw. So this one's pretty easy. What all you have to do is go to the uh, lens correction tab over here. It's the sixth one over, and you have two buttons there. It says enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberrations. So I'm going to click on enable profile corrections, and you see a little change. If I check on it and uncheck it, you'll see it changes. It kind of changes the distortion a little bit. Looks like it bows out a little bit. So what this is doing is correcting for uh, distortions caused by your lens. So as soon as I click on that, if you look down here in lens profile, it says that was a Nikon lens. It says it was an 18 to 200, 18 to 200 millimeter lens and a Adobe Nikon profile. So it knows from the EXIF data in the file what kind of lens that was and makes the corrections that um, go along with that lens. So it's kind of automatic, pretty cool. Um, so, that's it, almost. Uh, so let me go zoom in here a little bit and do one more thing. So there's another button here called Remove Chromatic Aberration. So what that is, Chromatic Aberrations is sometimes, you don't see it too much on this image, but I'll, I'll show you anyway. Um, you may get some purple or green, eh, usually purple fringing along the edge of high contrast edges. And uh, all you do to get rid of that is turn on Remove Chromatic Aberrations. And I don't think I see, I do see a tiny bit difference on my screen, but you probably can't see it in the video. But if you do see that kind of fringing, go ahead and turn that on and it will try to get rid of that for you. Um, so that's that. If you didn't like the correction that the um, profile corrections made, you could always go down here to correction amount and work with distortion to sort of manually dial it in. And you can also work with vignetting to manually dial that in. So if you wanted to do it that way, you could. Uh, the other thing that can happen is maybe you don't know, maybe the, the image does not have a lens profile, maybe it's a JPEG, maybe it's something that doesn't have any um, EXIF data in it, um, or it could be a, yeah, it could be a JPEG, or it could be something else with no EXIF data. So I'm going to turn that off, and we're back to where we started. Actually, I can hold down Option or Alt and click on Reset, and now we're back where we started. So uh, what I want to do is enable, I want to go to Manual Corrections over here and it's under this tab next to profile. And there I get a different distortion slider and I can do that sort of manually. So I'm gonna go um, just do what I want there as far as like making those lines, making it look less distorted, whatever I think. Obviously I can go really far and make it look that way or I can go that way. And so it's basically barrel distortion I think is what's correcting. So I think maybe it looks pretty good like that. It's not much of a correction actually. And then here's the vignetting. Um, if I want to go to the left, it adds dark vignetting around the corners. If I go to the right, it adds light. So most lenses, especially when they're wide angle, will give you a little bit of light vin or dark vignetting on the corners. So I'm going to go a little bit of plus here under vignetting. And that will brighten up. If I go back to zero, you'll see, you can double click on this to go to zero. There's a little bit of darkness around here in the corner. You can see it a little more over here. So I'm going to go a little bit plus until that kind of goes away. So I'm about plus 25-ish, but it's again, it's kind of up to you. So that's if you want to do a manual correction, you can go up here to the manual tab, uh, adjust the distortion here, and adjust the vignetting there. Um, so that's it. So I'm going to go back to profile actually and do it automatically. I'm going to enable profile corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, say done if I want to just apply those to the NEF file, or if I open the image, it'll open in Photoshop. So I'm just going to say done. All right. So that was the first one. Let's go to, uh, oh, since we were talking about vignetting, I wanted to show you how you can add it as an effect. So I'm gonna open, I'm going to open this image called Vignetting Start. And one of the limitations is um, on the vignetting that we saw before is it doesn't work on a cropped image. Um, but that's, that's one point about it, but I really want to show you how it works here in the effects panel. So I'm gonna go to effects, it says FX there. And then down here at the bottom, it says post crop vignetting. So I could crop this. Let's go ahead and crop it just a tiny bit, even though it's pretty tight already. I'm just gonna crop it a little bit, maybe like that. All right, so I cropped that a little bit. Now, if I did the regular vignetting that I saw under the lens correction here, um, 
you see it's kind of outside the edge. It's not really uh, using the crop. So, or it doesn't, it, the crop is kind of outside. It's from the original image. So if I want to do post crop vignetting, that's why it's called post crop vignetting. I go to the effects tab. So now I'm in the effects tab. If you want to go a dark edge, you slide this way. If you want to go a light crop, which is like from the 70s from wedding pictures, you would go to a plus. So I'm going to go, a lot of people like to go a little bit of, of dark edges on the crop, I mean on the vignetting, so that they can kind of highlight the subject a little bit. Um, as soon as I do that, I get a little bit darker around the edges, but I have all these other sliders come up. So let me show you what they do real fast. I'm going to slide the feather slider to zero. And what that does is turn off the softening of the vignetting. So here's the vignetting here. And now you can see what the other ones do a little bit more. So here's midpoint. It basically changes the size of the, uh, the vignetting or kind of where it starts and where it stops. So that's what that one does. Roundness, you can see it kind of rounds it off. It changes the shape. So you get this uh, changing shapes here with the roundness slider. So kind of in the middle is kind of the oval, right? And then feather, we already saw, that will soften the edge of the, of the vignette. So the more you go to the right, the softer it gets. The more you go to the left, it's a harder edge. So I'm gonna go in a little bit there. And actually, let me leave it over at zero for a second. I wanna show you highlights. So what highlights does, I'm not seeing it a ton here, but actually I am. So what it does is it preserves the highlight. And you can see up here in the mode or the style, it says highlight priority. If I slide to the right, it's showing me the highlights that are coming through outside the vignetting area. It's just a way to kind of see detail out there. Um, it's up to you whether you use that or not. I'm just gonna leave it off. And then I'm going to go to uh, feather until I get it kind of what I wanted. Um, so there you go, there's post crop vignetting. Again, the good thing about this doing in this in uh, Camera Raw is it is non-destructive. So if I click on that and say done, I haven't really changed my original. I've just saved some settings in Camera Raw. So I could always go back and change that if I wanted to. All right, let's go to the third image. This is Upright Start. I'm gonna open that one. And this image has a couple of issues. One's a little bit crooked and then there may be a little bit of distortion we'll see but I'm gonna go up to the lens correction first and then you do my profile correction. So that would be something I would do first. And you see it is doing a little bit of a barrel distortion correction. I think it's barrel distortion. And I might as well check the chromatic aberration too. I don't know if it has it, but uh, it might, let's see here. Oh yeah, it does. So there's a little, this one shows it more than the other image. Here's a little profile, a little bit of purple fringe around here. As soon as I click that button, it goes away. There you go. Um, a little more obvious on that one. Um, so obviously this image is still a little bit messed up, right? So what I'm gonna do is go over to this button up at the top left. Uh, it's a tool actually, it's called the transform tool. So I click on that and there's a lot of buttons in here. So you've got sort of a disable upright, you've got an auto setting, you've got a level only, you've got a vertical only, you've got a full apply level horizontal and vertical. What do all these mean? We'll kind of look at them here in a second. And then you've got a guided one here. 90% um, of the time, probably good percentage of the time, you could probably just click auto. So I'm gonna click auto and wow, it did a lot, right? So what it did was it straightened my image. It also corrected some of the perspective changes. If I click on this, uh, turn it off button to disable. You can see how it looked originally. It's obviously crooked, right? But it also uh, corrected some of the distortion. So the, the lines were kind of converging and they may be bowing even a little bit. And a really wide angle lens, you'll see it even more and it'll, it'll kind of help correct for that too. So that's the auto one. That's the one you would use most of the time. Uh, you might try this one also. This is just level correction. So that's just straightening it. If you just wanted to straighten it. This one does level and vertical perspective, so it might look kind of like the auto. Let's see if it's any different. It is a little bit different. So you can kind of try some different things. Most of the time, these first two are going to be the ones you're gonna use. Um, the third one, yeah, that's not really working. So that's the full one. So the auto, I think, is working the best here. Um, so I think that's good. Uh, you can always go down if you want and tweak it. Uh, or do it manually. We're gonna do that on the next image, but I'll just show you what they do real fast. I'm gonna go, here's the vertical one. So it's correcting vertical distortion. And I'll put that back where it was. And here's horizontal. 
So all this is uh, geometric distortions that you might get. Um, by the way, if you didn't want these, these distortions in your image in the first place, that's why people use, especially for architectural photography, they use um, field cameras, basically cameras where the front and the back of the camera move independently. And you can correct for all this stuff when you shoot um, because you can change the plane of the front of the camera and the back of the camera where the film or the CCD is or the sensor. Uh, you can change all kinds of angles, move them up and down, sideways, tilt them, all kinds of stuff, and make these corrections in the camera. That's why when maybe some high-end architectural photographers, they may shoot this kind of stuff with a view camera that has those corrections, so they're not doing it in the software after. You can do it in the software after, but it might be nice to have it actually photographed correctly in the first place. Rotation, I'm not sure what that does. Oh, yeah, it does rotation, right? You saw that. Uh, here's aspect ratio. That's the height ratio, the height to the width. Scale, it's kind of obvious what that does. X offset moves sideways, Y offset moves vertically. So I'm gonna go back to turn it off and then click back on auto and see, ooh, I think I've changed it a little bit. Let me reset, I'm gonna hold down option or alt and click reset. And now I'm back to my beginning shot and then just click on auto and I think that's actually pretty good. I would do all the other adjustments that I would normally do in this image, the contrast and all that, but uh, we'll ignore that for now. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say done on that one. All right, last one here. This one is manual correction. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that one and show you if we did this manually. So I'm gonna go back to that. Um, uh, let's go back and do our auto correction first just for the lens profile. So you see that's fixing some of the distortion, right? And turn on our chromatic aberration, see if we can fix any of that, if it's there. Then I'm going to go back to uh, the upright tool. And this time I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you could do this. So I could just try vertical uh, if I wanted to do that. Um, and then I need to rotate it maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna make it vertical like that. And that looks pretty straight. And I think my vertical distortion looks pretty good. Again, you're, I'm kind of eyeballing, I'm doing by hand, right? So I'm gonna make it so that it looks kind of like I want. Um, and I think that's maybe it. I don't think I need to do horizontal, so I'm gonna put that back to zero. So I got a rotation of about eight degrees, eh, maybe a tiny bit more, something like that. And then I've got a vertical of minus 25, and I'm, I'm not gonna mess with any of these other ones. So I've kind of just done that manually if I don't get re good results with the auto or one of these other settings. Then obviously I've got some empty parts of the image. I can go to my crop tool and turn on where it says constrain to image. So what that does is when I crop this image, I'll show you here, I'm gonna try to crop it. It snaps to where I can crop it and, and get no empty areas. So it's doing that automatically. Even if I drag it somewhere else now, it won't go outside those boundaries. So let's say I wanted to have it about right there. And then I hit enter on my keyboard and there it's cropped and it's pretty straight. I got it pretty good, I think. Um, there you go. Uh, so that's how that works. Just go up to crop and turn on uh, constraint to image. Let me reset this and show you one more way to do this. I'm gonna click on Hold down Option or Alt and click on the Reset button and we're back where we started. Uh, back in Crooked and everything. I'm gonna go, going to go back to turn on my profile corrections again. Turn on Chromatic Aberration, do those basic corrections. Then go to Upright. And this time I'm gonna show you this last one which is kind of cool. Sometimes it might work for you better than sort of eyeballing things. I'm gonna click on Guided. And as soon as I click on that, I can draw lines in here to tell Photoshop, kind of help it a little bit to say what what lines should be vertical and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna click right here on the edge of this building and then drag it out so it kind of falls the edge of the, the church there. And then I need to do another one, probably on the opposite side. So I'm gonna go over here on this pillar and go like this and see what I get. Whoa, quite a huge distortion. But it did take those vertical lines and make them um, uh, vertical. So if it does, it did kind of do some strange distortions here, but you can kind of see what how it works. It kind of, you're telling uh, Photoshop, okay, these two lines should be parallel. Now, as uh, far as these big empty areas of the image, you could again crop to this part of the image. And, and yeah, this one's still a little bit 
strangely distorted, but uh, but you could crop to this, or you could try content aware fill um, to fill this up. It works sometimes depending on the image, and sometimes it doesn't. What it does is try to fill these areas, looking at the surrounding areas. I don't think it would work well in this image, but uh, we'll probably check that out in a different video. So that's it for uh, some basic lens correction in uh, Photoshop and Camera Raw.